We're excited to announce that our very own podcasting platform, Zencaster, has become a new sponsor to the show. Check out the podcast discount link in our show notes and stay tuned for why we love using Zen for the podcast. You're listening to the Archaeology Podcast Network. This is the CRM Archaeology Podcast. It's the show where we pull back the veil of cultural resources management, archaeology, and discuss the issues that everyone is concerned about. Welcome to the podcast. Hello and welcome to the CRM Archaeology Podcast, episode 205 for December 30th, 2020. I'm your host, Chris Webster. On today's show, we talk about the end of 2020 and lessons learned doing remote meetings. So check your virtual backgrounds because it's the year of Zoom and because the CRM Archaeology Podcast starts right now. All right, welcome to the show, everyone. Joining me today is Bill in California. Good afternoon. Doug in Scotland. Hello, everyone. Heather, also in California. Thanks for joining, everyone. And Stephen in Calgary. Hello. All right, so this is our last recording before Christmas, basically. Actually, I think it's our last recording in 2020, if I'm not mistaken on my math here, because our next recording will be right after New Year's Day. So that's interesting, our last 2020 recording. Since uh, I think I've stopped, you know, time flows together, right? So we're looking at the end of the calendar, but I think I've started calling this, we're towards the end of year one of the pandemic. (laughs) Year one. There's no longer recognition between days or weeks or months. It's just year one of the pandemic. We're going back to just seasons being the only thing we recognize. That's depressing. Winter is coming. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Doug. I was just about to say, man, like the way 2020 is going, somehow it's going to be extended. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, just know, like, they're like, guys, we've canceled January. It's December again. Okay, I'm, <laughs> holding all, I'm holding all of you guys accountable if, if all this happens. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, every one of you. Am I the only well, and, optimist? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know... This is actually relevant to the podcast, this little discussion that we're having here, because to be honest, we just tried to get somebody on the show and we had to pivot immediately and hopefully we'll get her on next time. But it was a connection issue, which I think the motto of 2020 is going to be, can you hear me? I'm sharing my screen. Can you see my screen? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Uh, it says my headphones are connected. Can you, that's going to be 2020's motto, right? So you know screen sharing. It, it, I can't, I can't share it. i can't share while you're sharing unshare karen all right so um (laughs) exactly that's my life my students can definitely that that i don't even know how to use screen share on zoom well and there's the thing too like we were all thrust into this i don't want to say new technology because the zoom and video conference has been around for a while but None of us had to use this on such a regular basis. I was in a really unique situation where back in like August of 2019, I started working with a company where I had clients that I exclusively dealt with on Zoom, like right away. Like that's how we communicate. And we would have meetings several times a week and it was just like all day Zoom calls. And I was doing that, you know, eight months, nine months before the pandemic. So when the pandemic hit, like literally nothing changed for me, right? I mean, I had some clients where maybe some things changed for them just because, you know, different people left and came in. But to be honest, we've just, we've been just used to doing this. But that being said, before the pandemic, when I was talking to people, I would usually have to teach them how to use Zoom because they didn't use it as frequently as I did, right? And, and getting into this software implementation was the first time they had to regularly use something like Zoom or Microsoft Teams to communicate, share screen and learn and collaborate with, right? But now during the pandemic, like I just onboarded three new clients this last week. And they're just like old pros at it. <laughs> it's a completely different situation. They, they know how to use Zoom. No problem there. Everything is working just fine. So everybody's pivoted basically to from when is this going to end? I'm just going to put a bandaid on this situation and kind of ignore it for a little while. Like I feel like when we all went into lockdown in March and April or so that 
we did it with the thought that, okay, so we're going to go into this lockdown and by May we're going to be back to normal, right? Like that's how it's going to be. My Civil Air Patrol squadron is a good example. The national headquarters for Civil Air Patrol kept saying, uh, oh, June 1st, we're going to open back up fully. Wait, July 1st, we're going to open back up fully. Wait, October 1st, we're going to open back up fully. And now it's March 1st of 2021 that we're going to open back up fully and they have to put a date on it. They have to give people something to plan for, but it's just a moving target, right? It's just a moving target. And I think everybody's starting to get used to the fact that, well, this, this kind of is the new normal for a little while. The one thing, you know, like you said, there's so many people that are getting used to zoom. I mean, in my, my church, we were not able to meet for a long time and, and the priest was doing it over zoom. And it was really funny to see over the weeks, how, even the elderly were starting to kind of get their groove with <laughs> Zoom. In the beginning, you see like just their face, like looking. They have no idea there's a camera there that can see them trying to figure out their computer. And it was it was funny, comical. But over time now, and with Zoom, some of the issues with Zoom and the privacy of Zoom, some of the companies and agencies, municipalities don't trust it as much. And so they've been using alternatives like uh, go to meeting and teams and the Cisco WebEx meetings, those, those sorts. And I think the one challenge for those of us that, you know, are on these meetings a lot with clients is making sure that we are organizing yourself and preparing ahead of time and not assuming that any of these, they're, they're starting to pop up. All these alternatives are popping up every day. And so, you know, when you're meeting with a client, the one thing to remember is to, you know, prepare ahead of time, give yourself a good, you know, 20 minutes or, or so before the meeting, because, you know, you're always, depending on what kind of meeting you have, you're, you're nervous. If it's an interview for a new job, you're nervous, Mm -hmm. that preparation and making sure that you understand, you know, how to work the meeting, share, and all those just kind of basics are important to make sure you, you know, set up ahead of time. So. Yeah, that's, that's incredibly important. I'm glad you mentioned that because man, I have worked with so many people again, you know, it's getting better, to be honest, as we move through the pandemic, because people are used to they're used to Zoom and Teams and things like that. It's not a foreign concept to them. But all the way up until, you know, well, sometimes even just a couple months ago, you'd get people logging into a call right at the exact time that the meeting is supposed to start. Mm -hmm. And then 10 minutes goes by and they're still not there. And then they finally pop in and they're like, oh, I had to do an an update on Zoom because I turned it on and asked for an update. I was like, well, why did you turn it on right right before our meeting? (laughs) Make sure make sure it's going to work. And, and, you know, I understand if you're doing a call with me and it's an implementation call, then yeah, sure. I, whatever, I, that's fine. But if you're, if you're doing a, like an interview for a job over zoom, or you're doing some sort of, you know, something where you're driving the call, you know, and you're, and you're not sure of your skills or something like that, call a friend, set something up with a friend or a colleague and say, listen, can I call you over zoom? I need to go over how a few things are going to work. Learn how to use the annotate feature. That's super cool. Learn how to use the whiteboard feature. It's super cool. You know, learn how to screen share and, and not just screen share, but only share the window that you're on. So we don't have to see text from your wife or husband come over the screen. Right. So Let's let's learn how to be 2020, if not 2021, and do this the right way. Doug, your hand's been up for a little while. Is it is it still relevant? <laughs> uh, no, but uh, I didn't have another question. I was like, wait, whiteboard feature? And like oh, yeah. up all sorts of stuff in Zoom I didn't know existed. My point exactly. <laughs> what, wait, what, what is this? Uh, annotations? What? Like, I know, I know. You, do you mind like telling us a slightly like, I, I know I'm derailing the entire conversation, but like. Right. What? No, this is good. This is good. So yeah, the annotate teach feature, I use it all the time because I'm teaching people how to use software when I use Zoom. Right. And when you share screen, it only works when somebody's sharing their screen. So when I'm sharing my screen or they're sh- usually they're sharing their screen because I like the client to drive when I'm teaching them something, you just learn better that way. And I'm like, click here, click here, click here. And instead of me saying five times, nope, click over in the upper left-hand corner. Nope, just a little below, a little below. No, screw that. I go up and I click my view options up on the top of the screen and I turn on annotation. And then I can I can write on the screen with text boxes. I can turn on a little pencil with varying colors that I can draw on the screen. And I literally just circle where I want them to click. And I, and I sometimes I'll type on the screen too. 
it's telling them exactly what I want them to type, right? Something like that. So that's the annotation feature. The whiteboard feature is super cool too. And there's another brand new beta feature that I haven't tried. I'll talk about in a second. But the whiteboard feature is in the screen sharing area. So if you go to screen share and you look at your screen share options, first off, all your open windows will be there. That's another pro tip. Use the open window, right? So if you're sharing document or if you're sharing a safari window or a powerpoint presentation or you know whatever it is share that not your full screen as i mentioned earlier because we don't need to see your notifications we don't need to see that your laptop's about to die we don't need to see any of that stuff right we just need to see your um the thing that you're sharing so so do that but then be savvy enough to know that like for example when i'm sharing stuff sometimes i have to demonstrate downloading a file and then viewing that file, well, I have to be savvy enough to know that if I'm sharing just my internet window, if I download a file, they're not going to be able to see that. Also, any dialog boxes that come up, like a file download or a print dialog, they also can't see that, but they can see the window, right? But they can't see the other dialog boxes unless I'm sharing my entire screen. So sometimes when I need to have multiple programs up, I'll just share the whole screen. So Again, in the screen sharing window, though, there's a whiteboard feature. It says it right there. It says whiteboard. You share that, and now you can both or everybody on the call can now draw on the whiteboard and sort of workshop something or, you know, just just brainstorm in real time with their um, trackpads or, or mice. Yeah, I have a funny story about that. It reminded me we were on a competitive, I don't know, it, it, was, a, it was an interview where there were other companies mm -hmm. that came in, and we were not there at the same time, but we had just followed another company and the agency that was interviewing us had a, had a conversation box up that they didn't realize was viewable. And so while we're interviewing with them, we can see the, tile, the dialogue. They're talking about the previous company oh, yeah. that had just interviewed. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen they, that before. <laughs> and then they started talking about us. It was all good, actually. They were like talking about how how much better we were than the last group. But that that was a little awkward because then somebody, you know, from, from the agency actually types said, uh, Jim, uh, we can see your box. <laughs> it was the funniest thing. But yeah, there's all those little nice. things that, and, you know, I actually was just talking, telling the fellas before we came on that I was talking to some of my staff members and we were chatting and I decided I was going to show them something and I didn't. I just wasn't thinking I had been looking at my benefits to figure out, you know, what I was going to do with, you know, new, you know, decisions for, for, you know, stock and things like that. And I had my full salary up and I opened and shared my screen and there was in all its glory, my full salary. <laughs> it was just a little embarrassing. <laughs> so now yeah. I know yeah. to shut down windows before That's I... Right. <laughs> before I go on to a Zoom call. That's right. Well, you know, kind of along those lines, uh, because your your extra open windows, if you're if you're sharing your full screen, and, and again, there are use cases for sharing your full screen, but you've got to be conscious of what's going on. Some computers and on some programs, when I'm like when I do a PowerPoint or keynote on my Apple um, laptop, it will disable notifications when I when I go full screen and I go to present mode. It just does that automatically. But for some reason in Zoom, it doesn't disable notifications. But I have a, a quick button. If you've got a laptop, if you've got a Mac, you can you can use two fingers on the right side of the trackpad, like off the trackpad to scroll from right to left off the trackpad and then bring up this little window on the right hand side that says do not disturb. That will shut down all your notifications, right? And I'm sure there's a similar way to do that in Windows. But along the lines of sharing your whole your whole screen and kind of closing down the stuff that you have in the background or better yet, the open tabs you have open. If you're sharing a, a web window, like the other open tabs can put a little window into your life. Let's just put it that way. I've seen some interesting, interesting open tabs because I'm working with web-based software. So people often have lots of tabs open that they never close. And I'll tell you what, I've seen some things. So I'm sure. Um, <laughs> let's we just went, say we went from seeing people's partners naked in the background to <laughs> yeah people's 
salary and other things we don't want to see. Yes. Like, their, yes. their browsing history before they started the meeting. And <laughs> That's right. That's right. Speaking of backgrounds, let's take a break and come back and talk about backgrounds. We're talking about remote meetings this time and, and working during a pandemic and the crazy year that is 2020 and how we're all adjusting to it. So let's take a short break and we'll be back on the other side and talk about backgrounds back in a second. Chris Webster here for the Archaeology Podcast Network. We strive for high quality interviews and content so you can find information on any topic in archaeology from around the world. One way we do that is by recording interviews with our hosts and guests located in many parts of the world all at once. We do that through the use of Zencaster. That's Z-E-N-C-A-S-T-R. Zencaster allows us to record high quality audio with no stress on the guest. Just send them a link to click on and that's it. Zencaster does the rest. They even do automatic transcriptions. Check out the link in the show notes for 30% off your first three months or go to zencastr.com and use the code CRMARC. Looking to expand your knowledge of x-rays and imaging in the archaeology field? Then check out An Introduction to Paleo Radiography, a short online course offering professional training for archaeologists and affiliated disciplines. Created by archaeologist, radiographer, and lecturer James Elliott, the content of this course is based upon his research and teaching experience in higher education. It is approved by the Chartered Institute for Archaeologists as four hours of training. That's in the UK, for those of you that don't know. So don't miss out on this exciting opportunity for professional and personal development. For more information on pricing, and course structure, visit paleoimaging.com. That's P-A-L-E-O imaging.com. And look for the link in the show notes to this episode. All right, welcome back to the CRMR podcast, end of days or end of 2020 edition, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, and we're talking about remote meetings and how we've all had to adjust. And right at the end of the last segment, we were talking about desktop backgrounds, but let's talk about your own actual background. Okay. I, I have noticed that first off pro tip, I've noticed that when people like a lot of calls, we'll just turn backgrounds off and usually, you know, don't feel like you have to turn yours on because it's pretty common these days to just say, Oh, I'm having internet trouble. So I'm going to keep my background off. But it, but in reality, you're in like your bathrobe. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, that worked in the beginning. It doesn't work anymore. (laughs) Right? Uh, Oh my goodness. (laughs) Well, I'm working from home. I'm not turning on my camera. And and I've seen that uh, in a lot of the Microsoft team meetings that I've been on, particularly lately, clients almost never turn their cameras on. Um, um, and, And it's just us. Uh, we were up in the we were still in the office until last week, um, and literally just us with our, you know, with, with our cameras on, and we're not talking to anybody, right? Like, I think it's becoming more and more the norm that you don't turn your camera on unless you need your camera on. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I just, I mean, I guess, I guess it's up to the individual, but I, I think it's bad form when you're talking to the client. I think what you're doing is, is right. I mean, first of all, you can't connect with the name and even though the client doesn't want to be on, that's their prerogative, but I think it definitely helps to, to see the face and I don't know, it's just much more engaging. I have a pet mm-hmm. peeve about backgrounds though. And that is, and we we're talking about this earlier, that, that is, I can't stand people in their bedrooms and I can see your bed. It's just something yeah. about you. I don't, I don't want to see your bed and I certainly don't <laughs> want to see your messy bed. And <laughs> And I'm not, it's just, we were, we were laughing that my daughter, I walk by and here <laughs> she's her English teacher and he's got this really, really messy bed right behind him. And I thought, and my, my daughter, she's just used to it, but she's like, yeah, it's gross. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to think, I don't even want to think that my, you know, te- that my teacher, you know, is sleeping in the bed, much less anything else. I, if I see a messy bed, it, it, yeah, it's just so weird. And it's so easy to put a background on these days. I don't understand yeah. why people don't just put them, put it on and pick something. It doesn't have to be anything special, you know, just yeah. pick something. It's so much more professional. Yeah. One of the things that I found is uh, actually putting, you know, wearing the same kind of clothes that I'd wear to work helped a lot of, yes. uh, helped a lot 
to motivate me to even want yes. to do. Cause I, I don't know, man, I just can't stand meetings. I don't know if I've read too much four hour work week or whatever that I think, I mean, or maybe done too many safety meetings and tailgate meetings where it's kind of like go down the list real quick and get things done. If you have something to say, let's build those work groups and get that work done. But like working at Cal, it, I, you know, there's just so many life drinking meetings that yeah. are full of like, I don't know what is going on. And so, you know, I used to, I used to dread them in person and sit there with a blank stare waiting for this thing to finally be over. But, you know, on Zoom, it was even worse because then not only did I not want to do it and know that no matter what nothing was really going to come of us just sitting around and talking about like a conversation to plan on talking about something else next time with no real clear plan or any action items or anything like that. Like then there was almost no motivation once we switched to zoom land, but at least by like, you know, turning my camera on so that I couldn't just straight go immediately to work or something else, or, you know, actually do anything, you know, that actually produces results in the world that I would look into the screen that people could look and see that I actually was engaged with it. I mean, it, even though I wasn't necessarily wanting to do any of that stuff, it helped me with the motivation to just try, right? Because I could have totally easily just sat in my bed with Netflix going on my iPad, you know, with, you know, the same jammies that I've worn for four days and my, you know, facial hair getting out of control and just sat there, you know, degenerating. But instead, by just putting on clothes and knowing that I was going to be on camera, it, it forced me to actually engage, yeah. And that's, that's a really good point, Bill, because engagement is, is tough to gauge, right? Like when I'm on a call with a client, for example, and there's five or six people on there, sometimes I'll be talking for a while, to be honest, I'm, I'm in a training mode, right? And, I, and I'm, and I'm teaching them how to do things and I'll ask a question of them and it'll take people a little bit of while to respond. And I'm like, well, do you guys not know the answer or are you doing something else? <laughs> like, are you paying attention? Yeah, and when exactly. the camera's on, though, when the camera's on, you know they're paying attention, right? Mm -hmm. When they step away or when they do something, then that's pretty obvious, right? When they're when not paying attention. And this is all really good advice. The guest we were supposed to have on tonight, we were going to talk about her CV and getting a job and things like that. And this is all kind of part of it because, mm -hmm. you know, we might be... I mean, to be honest, I always had like phone interviews with archaeology if I had an interview at all. But if you're trying to apply for a for an upper level uh, position, then uh, you you might be doing a Zoom interview, especially if you're going to be working remotely. So your Zoom background or your team's background or something like that, as Heather mentioned, as we already mentioned, is going to be just as an, a big an indicator of your professionalism as anything else, like your CV or what have you, you know, it's going to be, um, it's going to be incredibly important. And I, I've worked with so many people uh, in my software implementation days where, I mean, their Zoom background, like Heather said, is your, is your bedroom, at least make your bed, right? If it's going to be right. your bedroom, at least make the bed. Let me know that you're organized and you know what's going on. And, you know, it's but, like, but I also understand why people have it in their bedroom because yeah. that's their only office, right? That's where sure. the computer is, or that's where they can get some peace and quiet because the kids are there. And we all understand that kids are a part of daily life these days, mm -hmm. right? And they're just a part of it. So I'm just going to let Dorothy listen. I don't care anymore. So kids are a part of daily life and they're going to happen. They're going to interrupt your calls. It's okay, but still curate your background or at least put up an image or blur it or something. You know, back in the, I'm going to date myself, but dress for success, right? Now that has to go beyond, you know, if you walk into an interview, you're going to be dressed nicely. You're not going to walk in in torn jeans and, you know, whatnot. So it's the same thing as whether it's right or wrong, uh, people should have compassion, understand, you know, it's, there's control the controllables. So yes. at least, at, at least just you know, set up your camera. It, if you have to do it and just move it around, put it on a TV tray. If some still, I still have those and turn it around so that you have a blank wall behind you. Anything better than 
something about your life that's personal that that you just don't want people to see or that's distracting. And people make decisions. They make they do they they make decisions instantaneously, and it's really hard to over- overcome those first impressions. So do yeah. do yourself a favor and control the controllables. Put yourself in the best light per- possible. Yeah, indeed. And that that's another thing that you didn't even intend to say, Heather. Put yourself in the best light possible okay yeah. so we're, we're always yeah. we're in different time zones it might be light where you are it might be dark where somebody else is you know keep keep an eye on that just because you can see your computer screen doesn't mean anybody else can see you we don't need to see you know little shop of horrors when we look into your zoom screen right like you're just like this like you're <laughs> holding a flashlight underneath your chin right <laughs> Like we don't need to see that. Curate your environment. Make sure you're professional. You look good. You don't have to wear pants. That's kind of the glory of this whole thing. But yeah. don't stand up if you're not wearing pants, right? Yeah, I, so. I kind of th- haven't people gotten in trouble for not wearing pants. I think pants are required oh. at this point. Okay. In year, yeah. year two of yeah. pandemic, pants are required. Like, I'm they sorry. Could be they could be sweatpants. They don't have to be nice pants. So you can wear like a suit on top. What do they say? Business on top. <laughs> And whatever. <laughs> okay, well, we're talking about bottoms. I don't want to really know about the. I don't want to know about the party down below. Just make sure that there's pants on. It doesn't have to be party. Just cover it up, please. Uh, that's All funny. Nineties references today. Dress for success. Party on top. Business. Er- <laughs> I got to kind of disagree with the pants thing because like when I'm, I'm going to an office right here we're, we're in Charlotte for a couple of months. So we rented an office actually. That's a nice little fishbowl with just my wife and I, uh, and it's totally secluded. So that's kind of nice. We just needed a, a place with better internet. But when I'm working from my RV, which we're traveling around and we're, we're in the RV, I'm usually sitting either in the, in the front of the coach in the passenger seat or just at the dinette with my computer. And to be honest, I've probably got sweatpants on. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm not, I don't have no pants on, but I probably have sweatpants on or shorts or something. But I've got my standard black polo up top and my hair's combed. And, uh, you know, I look, I look decent on a Zoom call. And, you know, like I said early on, a lot of Zoom calls these days, like the video is not even turned on. And, and for the most part, we're sharing screens and not really looking at video. But there are certain calls where it's always video. There are certain mm-hmm. calls where it could be video. Like, I don't even know. Right. So I always plan for video. And then if it's not if it's not going to be turned on, then it's not going to be turned on. But if other people turn their video on, then I will turn my video on. Yeah. Right. That's kind of the general rule. So I, I take my client's lead on that one. I think another nice touch is to have a profile picture. Oh yeah. That you have yeah. Instead of that's what I do. I have a profile picture and I'm lucky my company did some very nice profile pictures for everybody. But even if you don't have that, you know, create, have somebody take a picture, make, at least have something that looks professional if you're not going to be, you know, actually live and not a selfie, please. Yeah. <laughs> Go the yeah. old fashioned way. That's right. That's right. Heather's brought up a good point about you should, you know, if you're on the uh, call with a client and whatever camera on and, and whatnot. But I, I'd also say when, you, when it's just office meetings, it's totally okay to turn it off. Like if you know everyone on the call, I, I think it's completely okay to just turn off the video. Because I mean, at the moment, we we have a small, you know, British size home. They're not large American homes. I, I share my wife and my small child, and so it's not always an option to control your background. There's that 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 famous video oh, i'm pretty sure it made it over to you guys guy on the bbc yeah. and then his kid yeah. like walks in the background and his wife runs in and yeah yeah right. my child's learning to walk and, and she likes to come over and then like grab the laptop and try to like close it so there is no um <laughs> easy way of handling calls like that we we can set times where if it's an important uh client yes i'll be like sure. all right can you can you take can you you know take her somewhere else, maybe for a walk or something like we, or when she's on a very important call, I make sure that we're like somewhere else just to be able to manage that for an hour or two. But, you know, everyone's now switched over to Zoom. So there's like, I say Zoom, yeah. but it's now shorthand for what we used to call Skype. Pretty but, much. You know, video, video conferencing, everyone switched over. So ah, everything is now online. And there's just a ton of meetings that, yeah, you don't need a screen for because it's, oh, it's everyone you know. 
Um, and I mm-hmm. think people definitely, when that happens, yeah, just everyone should turn yeah. off their screens. You, you don't need to see people. You don't need to see their <laughs> eyes to realize, you know, that they're probably doing something else while they're on the call. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, everyone, everyone's doing something else on the call. Yeah. Uh, usually, um, even the people are usually talking, unfortunately, but yeah. On this podcast, I've heard you doing dishes or eating or something in the background, Doug. So, you know, well before Zoom. <laughs> okay. I'm a trailblazer, man. I was a trailblazer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's take our final break and come back and wrap up this call about remote meetings or this podcast, I should say. I'm used to saying call. It basically is a call. But this podcast about remote meetings, and we'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> You may have heard my pitch for membership. It's a great idea and really helps out. However, you can also support us by picking up a fun t-shirt, sticker, or something from a large selection of items from our T public store. Head over to arcpodnet.com slash shop for a link. That's arcpodnet.com slash shop to pick up some fun swag and support the show. All right, welcome back to episode 205 of the CRM Archaeology Podcast. And we were talking about remote meetings here at the end of 2020, our last recording for 2020. And, you know, Bill, Bill, you mentioned something in the comments right at the uh, right at the end there that I noticed saying, should we all dress up? You know, I, I think it's interesting the progression that things have taken, because, again, I've been working with this company in Australia for the entire year and you know, they already had like frequent Zoom meetings, right? I mean, not necessarily internally because they would all go to their office in Sydney, but when the pandemic hit and, and honestly, they were having some meetings that were on Zoom, but only like one person would be on, the rest of people would be in the room and then the North American contingent would be the, the remote ones. But now, of course, everybody's on Zoom and there was this one woman that really did it up. Like she knew when she was going to have the worldwide company meeting two or three times a week and she would craft her background. Like she, she dressed up, she put like Hogwarts in the background one time and put on like a witch's hat and robe and makeup. And she like (laughs) did it up. Now this was all internal. So she wasn't like you know talking to clients like this. Oh, that's good. I was was getting a little concerned. Yeah. But she, she did it up. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, Because we just uh, got locked down last week. So I've been been working um, from home, basically the same desk that I do these podcasts from. Yeah. And and I got a a nice compliment. I I don't, haven't typically used artificial backgrounds, but I have a nice bookcase behind me. So um, it it looks moderately professional. Yeah. But I I have like this dream for for like a pseudo one where basically I, I set up the room like it's a bridge of the enterprise. And you have the artificial <laughs> background and, and you can have like crew people walking back and forth across it or something like that. And, and then Steven, you just sit in a chair and, and like lean on the arm and, and like scowl. Right. Right. Steven, Don't you are a around. man after my own heart because early on I was looking for, cause in, on zoom, uh, again, if you don't know this, go check it out next time you're on, but on zoom, of course you can have virtual backgrounds, but you can also have virtual video backgrounds. And so, mm-hmm. Of course, of course, one of my early Zoom backgrounds was the Bridge of the Enterprise, TNG edition, of course. So I had the Bridge of the Enterprise. So when you're sitting there, it, it wasn't quite zoomed in just right to make it look like you were sitting in the chair, but it was close enough, right? So you're just kind of sitting there and and you've got the Enterprise in the background. That was a static image with no people in the background. I looked high and low and I haven't looked in months now, probably four or five months. I should see if somebody's done something, but I tried to look for just a a static bridge shot, right? Where there's no captain in the chair and it's in its view screen on, you know, looking, looking to the back with just like crew, but, but there's nothing. And it made me realize that there probably isn't anything in the, in the Star Trek universe where that's a thing. They wouldn't sit on a dead screen like that for very long. Right. Not, I mean, somebody would walk in the the door or something like that. Like that's what it would sit there for, but it'll only be for a second or two. So yeah, I definitely tried to look for that sort of thing when we were first starting here. But I think Steven, you bring up a good point too. One of the cool things I liked about moving into an RV during the middle of a pandemic when Zoom backgrounds were super hot, now everybody's shutting them off like we're talking about, but when Zoom backgrounds were kind of all the rage and who has the best, you know, uh, video background or, you know, is all impressive. Now it's just kind of standard. But when I moved into an RV, like I would make sure that I was positioned to where the window out behind me was something different all the time. Cause every couple of weeks we were basically on the move. <laughs> and so I was like, it was like hashtag real background, right? Like the real backgrounds are the best. I don't need virtual anymore because my real background <laughs> is better than my virtual background because it's always changing. But, but you bring up a good point with the bookcase too, you know, not that, 
you should really be ever ashamed of the books you read. If they're on your bookshelf, that's fine. But just note that people are not paying attention to your call sometimes and they're reading the books you have behind you. And if you're okay with that, I know exactly. Right. Like, like don't be ashamed of it, but just be conscious of it and make sure that it's either, you know, the books that you want them to see, or you're not ashamed of the books that are behind you. (laughs) I don't know what you'd be ashamed of. These are actually archeology span books. And I did, I, I do this. This is one thing I would recommend if you are going to start doing the video conferencing thing is when we were doing video conferences um, at work, I would always turn on my camera ahead of time to see what I could mm-hmm. see in the background. It's like, Oh crap. You can see like all my field gear just strewn about or, Oh crap. Right. You can see like all, all sorts of client information for a completely different project on my whiteboard that's behind me or yes. um, stuff like that. Um, in, in this case, I turned it on and you can't actually, there, there's only like four or five books where the text on the on the spine is large enough. You can actually see what it is. Mm. And they're all archaeology yeah. books. So nice. it, it it works. Um, but yeah. but well, it, definitely look behind you before you turn on the camera. Yeah. Yes. Be careful with whiteboards with like passwords and usernames yeah. on them too. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Doug. Oh, it's just a comment on uh, those artificial backgrounds that, you know, you can upload an image or whatever you wanted to to do a background stuff. I actually find those mm-hmm. incredibly annoying. Uh, mainly, <laughs> well, it's not the image. It's because uh, if Zoom is not good with that necessarily. I mean, yeah. Basically, yeah. you, you see people's arms like sort of disappear, and like yeah. <laughs> there's always a halo, mm-hmm. little shadow thing, and it's mm-hmm. it's super distracting because like they'll slightly turn and then like half their face disappears, and then you're <laughs> you're, you're paying attention to the disappearing face and not the words they're saying. Yes, actually, at this point, I sort of just zone out and just stop paying attention to them at all, uh, just to ignore that. But I don't know if. I guess this might be a pet peeve, but I'd I'd say like if anyone's well, considering putting those up, don't. <laughs> well, with it being just a quick comment on that before we get to Heather, with it being 2020 and all these are getting to be more popular, but there is, I think it's around 60 or $70, uh, which is a little steep, but if you're on Zoom calls all the time and you want a good background, it might be worth it. But uh, a colleague of mine went and got, I, I haven't bought one of these, but they've got like this round green screen that basically has mm-hmm. a little strap that hooks onto the high back right. of your um, office chair. It works if you've got a high backed office chair, like the one that goes up to your head that you can lean on. Because if you do, you can that green screen on there and then it doesn't do that anymore because if zoom if you tell zoom that you have a green screen it won't start keying you out right Right. it'll just key out the green screen and it actually works so yeah yeah, heather yeah i I was gonna say another one is just the plain color screen in the back like my company has a nice a nice color with our logo like in one of the corners that works a lot Mm -hmm. better than than the scenery in the background sometimes i do a scene a scenery but it's usually you know like our corporate office or that kind of thing so Whatever yeah. the team as a whole, we try to coordinate our backgrounds <laughs> when if we have a group meeting uh, with a client or a prospective client. But, you know, the, all of this talking just kind of reminds me that there's one element, you know, we're seeing parts of people's lives that we never saw before because of Zoom, yeah. uh, because of, you know, people are making themselves vulnerable, uh, whether they realize it or not, and, and not in a bad way. I mean, we're getting to know them. You know, my, none of anybody that i worked with had seen my house, you know, so now, now they see my house. Now they know what my Christmas tree looks like, you know, it's, <laughs> and, and it starts, you know, nice, familiar, familiar conversations. But at the same time, it's something to remember that, you know, a uh, a term that we all learned early in school is code switching, right? And Mm -hmm. it's really important that you know who you're talking to specifically comes to interview, you know, if you're trying to get a job or if you're talking to a client or, you know, know, read the room, know who you're talking to and make sure that that familiarity that you have, that's just innate in this background that we, you know, the, the video conferencing and how that just interjects that familiarity without even trying that you still keep some formality there at the appropriate times. And it is something to remember because, you know, you have for those young people that are, will be graduating soon and they'll be moving, you know, into the workforce, you're going to be interviewing and and people that are interviewing now at such a unique time, Mm -hmm. but people are not remembering that, Oh, this is a unique time. Not everybody's really 
you know, thinking that way. If they're interviewing, they're making decisions that could either benefit you or hold you down. And so just make sure that you're setting yourself up completely and, and that you, you just know the environment that you're in yeah. and act accordingly. Yeah, I feel like Zoom backgrounds have gone the same way of masks, right? There's been basically three stages where for Zoom backgrounds, it, we started with no background because nobody knew how to do it. Nobody And Zoom didn't have a great way to do a virtual background for every computer. They had to upgrade their software. So you needed to have a certain type of computer and a certain type of speed on your software and all that stuff and able to do a virtual background. Not even could in the beginning. Same thing with masks. Everybody was just wearing whatever surgical mask they could get for, you know, four cents at the grocery store. And, and, you know, the best thing they could have, or there were people walking around, like I had a couple N95 masks from when we painted our house, because that's just what we bought to do that. And, and I actually felt guilty wearing the N95s actually, because, you know, there was a shortage and it, it was kind of weird, but, but that was a zoom background. We didn't have one and you're, you're looking at your messy background and we were incredibly vulnerable. Then we all got fancy, right? We all started putting on virtual backgrounds and, and virtual video backgrounds. And as I mentioned before, some people dressing up and doing things, same thing with the mask, we started wearing crazy masks and, and, you know, buying fun novelty ones. But now, just like you said, Heather, now there's a lot of corporate backgrounds because corporate branding got a hold of everything and said, listen, you're going to have this background when you're on a client call. This is now the standard properly resolved background with the logo and there's corporate masks out there and people are wearing those. And it's kind of gone hand in hand, I think, with all that stuff. You know, to be honest, the mask thing is another good thing to bring up because Heather, like you were talking about interviews and things like that. If you happen to have a face-to-face -face interview with somebody, it's probably quite rare at this point in time, depending on where you're mm -hmm. at in the country, but some, some areas of the country are still doing that kind of thing. But if you happen to have a face-to-face -face interaction, don't wait to see whether or not they're wearing a mask, right? Yes. Wear a mask on your way in and make sure it's not a mask that looks like a pizza or something like that. Like <laughs> go out and buy a solid color, plain mask, <laughs> put it on. And it's <laughs> yeah. Please make sure it's clean. <laughs> Oh, Make sure boy. it's clean. Yeah. <laughs> and walk in. I mean, just like your clothes, right? You're going to put yeah. on good clothes for the interview. Put on a nice professional mask. It's weird that we have to say that, but that's yeah. where we're at. Put on, oh, don't have goodness. a crazy sequined mask that says, you know, juicy across the front of it, no, right? You like, know, make bro, sure. <laughs> everyone hates creativity in this group. They're like, cover up your creative room that you haven't cleaned in years, you know. <laughs> well, Throw away like, those read pizza the room, boxes though. on your bed. Like, why are you doing all these things, you know, wear a mask. <laughs> Forget that juicy one that looks pretty and, I, and you actually like it and it fits better. You know, we're some some junk from the gas station that actually is more professional. I mean, I, I'm just going to come out and say the, the elephant in the room that I think many people are realizing that much of our time was sucked up with bulls. I mean, I don't know. Can we yeah. curse on this thing? BS, yeah. right? We've already had that episode, uh, Bill. <laughs> say whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I think a lot of us are realizing that our, our lives were just full of bullshit. These meetings that were going on, like that first five minutes, that's just kind of like, oh, hey, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. I mean, what are you talking about? How are you? I'm locked in my house in Hercules, California. How are you doing? Like, now I got to clean my entire house every single time because you all can see how dirty my home is. Like, that's how I'm doing. I'm wearing a freaking black mask on because there's a pandemic going on. That is how I'm doing. Okay. So, like, let's just get to the yeah. actual content yes. so yes. I, I would recommend that folks start screening their meetings right and so if they know that it's a bs meeting that people are going to chalk it full of other crap then just get your other stuff ready on your side screen that's going to be a camera offer because you're just listening on this stuff while people just go on and on yes. with this you know silly slideshow that they're talking about and showing their cats and you know you're getting some actual work done because you're supposed to be in the meeting and there might be 30 seconds where you have to say anything and then you know you can go back to actually doing your work the other thing is mm -hmm. if you're facilitating the meeting know in advance what the agenda is turn it on when it's time for the meeting to start say hello when you've got a quorum, right? So there's going to be people doing updates and all this other stuff. They're late, whatever. There's always people that are late. Start just doing the meeting, right? Just start doing the meeting. Work through the things. When you get to the point where it's time for a thing to actually happen, like, well, what do you all think? Rather than saying, what do you all think? 
decide in advance that people are going to get into groups and address the question you said, what do you all think? Okay, four of you are going to get together and we're going to work for 15 minutes on what do you think about this thing that needs to happen, right? So make them actually productive, right? Because, you know, in the past, we had to smile and say hi and talk about people's kids and all this other stuff when we were at the office and everything. Well, you know, now we don't have to really do any of that stuff because they can't actually see what I'm doing. So like I would say, do all that stuff. But then the most important thing because of COVID, just weasel out of meetings where you know nothing's going to happen. If it's just someone doing some updates on what's going to happen to the company when, you know, I'm, I've experienced this on a daily, right? Sign in, show up, register for this meeting. You already know it's going to be recorded and you already know they aren't going to do anything yeah. because it's COVID and they have no idea what the hell's coming next. And more and more people are getting yeah. sick. So this person has no power. They're not the governor. So they actually can't change things. All they're doing is filling you in because there's some people who are like so worried that they feel okay if someone from Cal's dean of whatever says a thing about COVID, right? So they're going to sit there and listen for two hours. Okay, you know, I don't need to be part of that meeting. I can always just not even go or I can sit there for a few minutes. And when they haven't done anything worthwhile in like 10 minutes, they're still on the introductions of where they went to college and all this other stuff. Like it's time for you just to bail, like get out of there, right? Just see if you can get the notes from it. Because the key is for the first time ever, no one is actually leaning on your throat (laughs) and forcing you to get stuff done. You can actually just get your work done and then have all of the rest of the day to do something else. Like you don't have to, we were, we were filling a lot of our not in the field excavation time with a bunch of stuff. Yeah. We can either spend that extra time to make the product that we're creating better, or we can take that time to our own selves because if you only had four hours worth of work and you had to just sit there looking at fantasy football and hanging out at the water cooler and, you know, doing all this other extraneous scanning pages and crap, to fill in your eight hours so that you got your full day. Well, now you don't have to do that. You're just going to get your eight hours. You can still get the work done. And if it's a gibberish meeting, you don't really have to sit there because people are starting to find ways to fill our time with all these meetings because they all want to be connected and all this other stuff. Like, you know, they think that if they're not making meetings and they're not talking into Zoom, they're not working. Well, the thing is, by them talking into Zoom and sucking your time up, you are also not working right now while this meeting's going on. So if it's your turn to do a meeting, aim for 15 minutes. If you can't get it done in 15 minutes, be mindful of people's time and make it actually productive where folks are solving problems. And if not, just go ahead and bow out, man. Do whatever you want to do. Nobody's watching you anymore. I guess I know why you didn't accept my happy hour, my virtual happy hour. (laughs) I was really kind of, I was offended, but I'm not anymore. I'm so glad. I'm sorry. I didn't even know about your Zoom happy hour. Okay, I'll take. I will say one thing. If it is, a, if it's a meeting for party on top or party on bottom or party with a drink in your hand, don't bail on that. Turn that on. Camera on. Show up with your costume. I prefer Beast Man from He Man, so I'll be showing up like that. Uh, but at any rate, no, no. I mean, Zoom. That's it. We are able to actually hang out with each other more. And if that's the idea of it, let's do the hangout, man, because I've, I've yeah. watched plenty of football games and hung out with my buddies watching the game from my garage on my laptop, drinking a beer and hanging out with Zoom yeah. going in the side because we can't actually see each other. So no, I'm sorry. That is not why. I'm just, I'm just, right. I just work for the, I work for the government. So I think you all know, like, you know, <laughs> where do your taxes go? Who knows? <laughs> I would say in the corporate world, we're really quickly finding out who were, who had superfluous jobs, like who had the fluff jobs, because for me, me, I mean, there's no such thing as an eight hour day, unfortunately. And I think you guys can, you can all, you guys all understand that, but it's, Mm -hmm. there is, there's so many of these extra meetings to do exactly what Bill was talking about. It's just ridiculous. And before, because a, a lot of what they were doing was kind of creating an environment, a physical environment. They don't have that anymore to create. So now they got to do it on Zoom. And you're right, it's it's very frustrating. Yeah. But at the same time, when you're first starting out, like in a company, it's nerve it's nerve wracking. You're not sure should you sign up for all of them. You know, should you? I think it's a good. <laughs> I, it never hurts. Pro tip, as Chris would say, register <laughs> for them. Nobody's checking to see if you're there, but at least you're registered. So you're being a team player. You're not like, you know, being some hermit or whatever, but at least you're on the list as having registered. And then you can decide whether or not you're going to go. <laughs> That's right. That's if right. we had a, a narrator right now, they would have been saying, and as Bill ranted, 
all of his fellow po- uh, podcast panelists were working on their side screens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear a word uh, Bill said because I was looking at Safari. So well, I was up fortunately, you, re- you recorded it so we can play it back. <laughs> I can actually play it back to you on the phone after we're done. <laughs> that's right. That's right. All right. So we are at the end of this podcast, but I want to go around the horn one time in the order that you guys are on my screen and just have you tell everybody what your biggest either pro tip or pet peeve or whatever is about video conferencing calls in general. If you want to specify Zoom, that's fine. But just the calls in general, what's your biggest either pet peeve or tip that you want people to know? And Stephen, you're on the top of my list right here. So go ahead. Oh, crap. Um, <laughs> could be something okay. you've already mentioned. I just want to know your the first thing that comes to your mind. I, honestly, the first thing that comes to my mind is something I didn't have a chance to say about backgrounds. And that's, there's a Twitter account. I, I forget what it's called. It's basically Rate My Room. And it, and it yeah. uh, rates the rooms of bas- basically all the talking heads on TV who are like, you know, <laughs> calling in for, calling it in from home. And, and basically it's like, you know, and, and it dissects it like, you know, like poor, poor lighting, poor camera angle, really likes book, uh, bookcases and art and, and stuff like that. And, uh, no, no, uh, electronic cords, please. Yeah. And if you find that you're doing something where you have the ability to modify or redecorate your background a little bit or choose your background in your apartment or home or whatever room, you know, you might want to give that a quick look because it helps kind of prime your thinking about, you know, what works, what doesn't. Nice. Good job. Doug, what about you? Uh, I think I'd just go back to, if you want to turn off your screen, I, <laughs> man, or I, I might steal like bills. Like you don't have to go. Like I, I, I yeah. feel like we've slowly started. Yeah adding more zoom meetings slash teams meetings slash true. I don't know how many meetings there are. And it's, it's rough. Cause like, so I have multiple different jobs and all the jobs basically have like sort of a, a catch up weekly catch up sort of meeting or, or something. Mm-hmm. It's all video conferencing. I have to say other than like one, I absolutely have to show up to, uh, because it's mainly about actual business stuff. I may have gone to one of those over the last mm-hmm. nine months or yeah, we're into this nine months. Yeah. Roughly. Cause yeah, I, I feel like it's just getting worse. It's like the months drag on. Um, we're just sort of slowly switching over what we used to have to just being online. And uh, yeah, I think anyone just say no. Just say well, no to Zoom. Like, uh, say no to drugs. Say no to Zoom. <laughs> People, savvy, savvy and regular listeners of the podcast might be thinking Doug applies that thinking to the podcast as well, since he hasn't been on an episode in about a month. So Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Bill, you're next on my list. What's your biggest pet peeve? Quickly. Well, it's not my biggest pet peeve. It's something I love. It's the fact that we're using Zoom to give all these amazing talks and amazing workshops and amazing webinars. I mean, I'm now you you no longer have to go to conferences to see what's going on in the UK or to see, you know, uh, Smithsonian hosts, different things. I mean, there's just a never ending stream of just amazing, uh, you know, webinars and you can connect with scholars from around the world. So I would say that's the thing that I love the most that that one hurdle that I think I can't even remember years ago in Seattle, Doug, we tried to record yeah. a workshop at the SHA yeah, okay. and I remember it was like so difficult to do that. Now we've gotten over that hurdle and it's like, you know, everybody's just unlocking and they're giving their talks and it's just totally amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ne- necessity is the mother of invention for sure. SA 2021, by the way, if you haven't heard this, went full virtual, which I'm glad of because I probably wasn't going to be in San Francisco in April and was going to have to fly there. And now I could still give my panel presentation from wherever the heck I end up being in April. So Heather, next up. I swear to you that this really was my pick before I ended up being last. And that is knowing when to quit. knowing when the meeting is over it's like a bad day it's like a bad day nobody knows when to say oh you too oh you too right right. (laughs) it's like 
it's over. The meeting's over. Let's move on. And the same thing with getting it going. I know Bill had mentioned that is like ever all these niceties. It's nice to be polite, but like move on. And you don't have to wait for somebody to, you know, come. If they're late, they're late. Move on. They'll they'll yeah. catch up. You know. But I would say the main thing is just making them as concise as possible. And that's a pet peeve, is when they're not concise. Well, and I'll, I'll piggyback on that just a little bit before I give mine. And that's be respectful of the calendar. If you booked an hour for this meeting or you booked a half an hour, stick to it. You don't know what everybody else in that meeting has going on, even though if you're still plowing forward and it's the end of time, you just planned poorly. Do another meeting. OK, end that one and move on with your day, because if you've got more than one other person on the call, chances are your schedules are not synced up and and they have something else to do with that time. So especially yeah. when we're on Zoom meetings throughout the day, you know, and doing different things, you just be respectful of that time. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give mine real quick. And that's just know the technology. Right. If you're using Zooms, great. If you, I had to learn Microsoft Teams because I've had I had one really big client over the summer that insisted on teams because they just wanted to insist on teams. And I didn't know teams at all. I got on with a couple of my colleagues. We did some, some practice teams calls because I'd literally never used the software before, but now I understand it and I'm teaching other clients how to do it and doing things with teams, you know, teams versus zoom, whatever, whichever one you're doing, if you're driving the call, learn the technology, even if you're not driving the call, Know where things are. Pro tip for Zoom. I do like saying the word pro tip, Heather. I don't know that too pointed out, but pro tip for Zoom. <laughs> I know if you're muted and people like to stay muted all the time, there's nothing wrong with that. But if the Zoom window is active, which means that was the last thing you clicked in and we can tell when it's not, because if you click away and it takes you a long time to unmute, it means you were doing something else. But if the Zoom window is active, you can use the space bar like a push to talk button. You just hold the space bar down. It unmutes you. You let go of the space bar. It remutes you. But that's only if the Zoom window is active. So know your technology, know all its little tips and tricks, and you'll be better for it. So that's it for this episode. We had to pivot. I want to thank everybody for the last episode in 2020 here. As is usual with this podcast, we had to come up with something at the last minute because our other other plan kind of fell through literally at the last minute or in the minutes after we we're supposed to start recording this. And that happens as technology, things fail. It's no big deal. So we'll pick up with it next time and, and go on. But thanks to this group for continuing to press on every two weeks, getting this podcast out. And um, I really appreciate it. So here's to a, a bunch more great episodes in 2021. And I think our ninth anniversary coming up in, in February, which is just totally insane. So yeah. That's it. We'll see you guys next time. And the next time we record, we'll be right after the new year. And the next time you hear this, it'll be 2021. Hopefully. Hopefully Bill's prediction is wrong that we don't just continue 2020 into the year. Year two of pandemic. <laughs> it shall be year two of year pandemic. Two. <laughs> nice. Nice. All right. See you guys later. That's it for another episode of the CRM Archaeology Podcast. Links to some of the items mentioned on the show are in the show notes for this podcast, which can be found at www.archpodnet.com slash podcast. Please comment and share anywhere you see the show. If you'd like us to answer a question on a future episode, email us. Use the contact form on the website or just email chris at archaeologypodcastnetwork.com. Support the show and the network at arcpodnet.com slash members. Get some swag and extra content while you're there. Send us show suggestions and interview suggestions. We want this to be a resource for field technicians everywhere, and we want to know what you want to know about. Thanks to everyone for joining me this week. Thanks also to the listeners for tuning in, and we will see you in the field. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye, Doug. <laughs> see, you, see you later, Doug. Bye, Doug. Doug's doing Doug's doing Mississippi's in the in the year, text. But <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really work out in the text because I can say it faster than he could type. It still makes me laugh so. every time. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you only had time for four Mississippi's. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, nice. you, you can't uh, you can't rush the quarterback too soon. This episode was produced by Chris Webster from his RV Traveling America, Tristan Boyle in Scotland, and the Archaeology Podcast Network, and was edited by Chris Webster. This has been a presentation of the Archaeology Podcast Network. Visit us on the web for show notes and other podcasts at www.archpodnet.com. Contact us at chris at archaeologypodcastnetwork.com. 
Thanks again for listening to this episode and for supporting the Archaeology Podcast Network. If you want these shows to keep going, consider becoming a member for just $7.99 US dollars a month. That's cheaper than a venti quad eggnog latte. Go to archpodnet.com slash members for more info.